Hey guys, it's Grant and Julie with Dawkins Family Farm, and uh, I came home to something I wasn't expecting to have to deal with tonight. So, cattle. Cattle. They're all, they're they're smart and dumb all at the same time. Grant got home from work today and noticed that one of the steers was in the wrong pasture and we're not really sure how he got over here. Um, the gates are still shut so it makes us wonder if the pond is so dry that they've gone around the fence that goes into the pond. Don't let Stephen get out. Hey, 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 nope. We're going to stay here. We're going to stay here. If that's the case, then they all need to come into this pasture and then we'll have to water instead of getting them water from the pond. Come on, boys! Woo! Come on! Nope, we're gonna stay here. Do you want to shut this gate and go look for him? Huh? You want to shut? Come on, they're coming. Are they in the driveway? No, they're all in this other pasture. I'm going to put them over here, fill up their water tank, drop over there, and then they'll just be over here. There's plenty of pasture over here. So you're saying that? You're going to need to get back out of the way. Okay, I see them so coming. Like, Yep. I'll stand over by the driveway. Go up there, yeah, in the driveway. So, looks like the rest of the herd is still in the other part. Which is great. So we're going to have to go up towards the garden and see. Potentially, they could have eaten the whole garden down. Which would be devastating. Here comes, let's see, there's four of them. Nope, all five. Good. Come on, guys. Mm. So there was just one that got out. Come on. Come on. He's luring them by their feed. As we all know, they love their treats. Come on. Come on, radio. Come on. Radio, come on. Come, here. come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on, boy. Mm. Yeah, well, come on, get some treats. Come on. Yes, they are spoiled.
Good job. Good job, boys. Good job. Time to go see what damage was done. Yeah, Getting a mineral block. Yep. They all need that salt. Now we need to go up and. Make sure the other gates are closed too. Hey guys. This could have been a lot worse. I, I was expecting it to be worse. But we'll go over there and look at the pond and see where they got through. Problem is the pond, Julie may have said it, but problem is the pond is getting so low now that the fences that go out into it are um, compromised a little because they can just walk around it because apparently it doesn't rain anymore in Oklahoma, at least eastern Oklahoma. So let's let's load up and we'll go over there and check those too. Say it again. You want to hop? Oh, wrong way. Hold my on. ride? Oh. You want to hop on my ride? Yeah, let's go, babe. All right. This pasture hasn't been grazed in probably a couple months, but it's, you know, it's been dry here and haven't had much rain, but there's enough pasture over there to um, keep them full. Um, but yeah, I've noticed something um, this year watching the calves and just watching them grow and, and what they like to eat is they, they prefer to eat short grass. So if you look around, you see on the ground down here, Julie, if you'll show down here, like, this is crabgrass. They prefer to eat crabgrass and low grass before they'll eat knee-high native prairie, like a uh, little blue stem and things like that over there, and, which I'm still learning about some of this stuff, and it's interesting to me to figure out what they like to eat and what their first choice is. A lot of times um, you will turn them into a pasture and they'll go around to the the, the choicest, yummiest <laughs> uh, feed first and they'll clip the little ends off of plants and they'll select those first and then they'll come around to eat your grass and stuff. It also um, kind of shows that you um, don't have to keep every weed on your pasture sprayed and killed because they'll, they'll eat those weeds too. I've heard of people spraying their weeds with molasses to get their train their cattle to eat them. For me, that's kind of overkill and not something we can plan on doing because when you just have six calves, that every little bit cuts into your profit. So you want to try to, you're doing this to make money and to keep your pasture grazed down, but, or trimmed up. So it's a little silly to spray your weeds with molasses, but I've heard of that. And But anyway, it doesn't hurt your cows to eat weeds and they'll eat the ones they wanna eat and they won't, the stuff that they don't. So um, that's where goats kinda come into play if you ever wanna have goats. They're good to kinda keep your brush if you'll show over there. Um, you see how it's all grown up in there. Goats would, they can clean up everything that's six foot high and down. So if you look out there, 
Um, they would. That's not our place over there, but it can kind of get you an idea of what we're talking about. Um, yeah, they'll kind of keep your brush cleaned up. And this place over here hasn't been mowed or hadn't had any cows on it in years. And you can kind of tell it turns into a grown up mess too. There's a bunch of sumac and stuff that are way overhead high and there's um, big black blackberry patches over there that are eight feet tall and probably 30 yards across, 30 by 30. So it's good to have goats or something to keep your pasture um, grazed down. So we're gonna go over here and fill up the water tanks too and make sure they're all uh, watered up because we, like I said, we don't have a pond over here to, to water them. I'm getting ready to fill up the water trough, but I noticed how big the uh, pecans are on these mom and dad's um, pecan trees. They're, they're like a chicken egg almost. I don't know if y'all can see that. It looks like it's aborted some of them, but um, they may have a few pecans this year if they can keep the worms out of them and the squirrels. A lot of times you'll see a little hole in here from where the, the worm bad camera person. oh i'm sorry there they are so yeah i was looking for kind of a worm hole in them or anything they probably will but um yeah there's several on here um they planted these trees probably oh probably four or five years ago and they haven't really grown a whole lot but they're just i think this is probably the first year for pecans We've got a pecan over in our, our yard, but it's not a, this is a, uh, a cultivated pecan. Ours are like more native, so they're smaller. So anyway, I just noticed that, thought that was cool. We'll go over here and turn on the water. Let's dump out that water. That's nasty. Here we go. I need to lay off them cheeseburgers at lunch. Let's see if I can even turn the stick on. Had a bunch of nasty water in. No critters under there. I thought there might be a snake or something right there, but nothing there. If you'll turn on that water, Julie, and hand me the hose, I'll drink this out. Sure. Yikes, Julie. <laughs> when, you hand, when you hand something to somebody when it's running, you don't point it right at them. <laughs> Not really. You rolling? Yeah. Okay. I hope you all can see down here the black, how it's black right there. What that is, is um, flex seal. This tank, water tank, had a hole in it. We had it at our old house. We raised chicks in it. And uh, it had a hole in it. So I just took some of that flex seal and sprayed in there to see what would happen if it would hold. And darn it, if it didn't hold water. So that's an idea for y'all who have stock tanks or stuff. You want to save a little bit of money and not have to buy a whole new stock tank. Because this thing's probably 150 or $200. So it's a good way. A ten dollar can is better than two hundred dollars worth of um, the, on the trough. So over there's our working pens. Whenever we have to work the calves, we that old squeeze chute, and uh, a lot of those panels came from my grandpa's place, grandparents' place um, out by Prague, Oklahoma. Um, the squeeze chute did and the red those red panels came from down there and that big walkthrough gate came came from there and the uh 
I believe that trough that's in there. So we try to, I've said it before, but we try to keep using stuff that's in, been in the family, kind of keeps a family connection um, for everybody. So, and I'm sure they would appreciate us being thrifty. Um, just one of my ramblings here, but um, see this water in here, it looks kind of funky, but it's uh, was, uh, well water. And I've always thought it was super cool that water is down in the ground and it's not in the lake. Like when you drill a well, um, you're not like drip tapping into a, like a lake down there. You're drilling down into the rock and the water is down in the water table in, in sand down in the ground so it um it's just distributed throughout the rocks and stuff and when you drill a hole or a well in it that kind of gives it a collecting point so this well i am got to turn off the water but this well is a couple hundred feet down and there's a pump in this little dog house right here this white house but you're pumping water up out of the ground and it comes out clear and clean and fresh you could I wouldn't drink it now but you could drink it as it comes out of the hose and it's clean you know it's always amazing to me that water water's down there and the oil even lower below below that and uh, it's just really interesting that there's clear clean water down there that we can use you just have to be able to drill a well um, just a little tidbit of thought when did this like when did they dig this well? They dug this well, it's probably been 10 years ago, maybe more, 12. They did it mostly just to water their garden because they've got a big garden over here. Um, and uh, they uh, use it to kind of get their um, water bill to come down a little bit. So it's a little bit of investment to have a, a well drill. It's a couple thousand dollars probably to have a well drill at least. Um, but you can save some money um, by um, using that water now this one takes a while to, to fill back up so you get about I don't know it takes a while to fill that's a couple hundred gallons there maybe a hundred gallons but it um, takes a while to fill back up and even with the drought and stuff it's still it's a little slower to fill back up but that's one way to do it and they've talked about um, drilling another well out here somewhere and tapping into that um, because there, I don't know how much their water bill is, but in the summertime, it's big time with a pool and all the plants and all the irrigation, and it adds up quick. So. And we have a well in our place. Yeah, but it's it's an old timey well, and we'll we'll show you that to you. Is it one of those that you could crank, like you know, the pump out, like the old pump thing? Oh, the handle. Uh -huh. Yeah, you could do that. I saw someone on. Instagram or no TikTok, and he was installing his pump for the summer. My grandpa had one um, out in front of his house for years and years. Um, grandpa Vaughn, my mom's dad, and it wasn't hooked up to a well. He was just sitting on a little round, like table kind of thing. And I used to go play with it. And but it'd be fun to have it. My uncle Fred, I think, has it now at his house. But um, but yeah. Um, and we could do something like that. I have to figure out all the logistics of doing all that. But the well goes down about 20 or 30 feet down. So you can get a little bit of water out of it. Not a whole lot, but... Isn't that where the garden's going to go? Mm-hmm. That's where the garden will go. Maybe we could do the same one day. Right. Here we go probably walk right through there. See where the fence is rusted out? That panel needs to be replaced. Those galvanized panels only last so long when they're in the water all the time. Because that, that zinc kind of wears off of them a little bit. Hmm. So he, yeah. He was trying to get back to his buddies, walking back and forth. He go fall in. You see all the tracks? Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like he went this, nope. Well, they went that are. way, then we went back that way. Like, oh, nope, stop, turn around. I don't, I don't think he, uh...
The fence. Back up to the driveway. Last night we uh, girls went and had a photo shoot and sure enough Savannah was like mom I think the pond is low I think the cows can get around that and I thought surely not they'll do it um, when we used to have mama cows and a bull we had a couple of Angus bulls and one of them was a fighter he beller I don't know if you've been around bulls or not but they'll beller um, if they think they're tough and he would beller and holler and there was a bull about a half a mile that lived probably about a half a mile or farther east of here and he called that bull up hollered at him and that bull came all the way through every fence all, all the properties all, i don't know how many there are five or ten and it came all the way over here and uh fought in the yard here in in, in the yard of oak grove gardens and uh, while dad and i this is back when i was in high school or early adult fought around here in the yard while my dad and i were both in canada on a fishing trip i've heard this story before because mama his mom mm -hmm. was home alone with yeah. the two fighting bulls yeah. in the front yard so they were pushing into each other and that same bull we had he would get around these fences he'd swim around the pond and swim across and the neighbor over here had Hereford bull and a big old her old Hereford bull had a real curly head and hair on him and that bull our bull thought he was pretty tough he went all the way through went through the actually there's a fence up there by the shop but and he went through there and that old that old Herford bull whooped him all over that pasture and, and it kicked his butt and sent that bull back through the hole in the fence and back all the way back over here and that bull never went back over there and whooped him or tried to fight him so it's kind of funny to uh, we're not getting bulls are we if we not yet anyway not yet oh, okay if we get mama cows, we might. But this mama wouldn't know what to do. What no. did she do? I forgot. She called Ben Chester. I think he came over and helped out. I think that's what happened. But or Uncle Paul. I think it might have been Uncle Paul. Yeah, that's a that's a story we'll have to have her tell from yeah. her perspective mm -hmm. one day. We'll see if we can get, get her on here. Yeah. yeah, she was not happy. I'm sure not. But anyway. We, we could only we we and we only had that bull for a couple of years before he started doing all that stuff and he wasn't that good of a bull anyway so we we loaded him up and took him to town so somebody at mcdonald's ate him so well, true yeah so that's what happens when you take a bull to the sale most time they go straight to the processor for hamburg all right so, well are we ready to sign off yeah all's well ends well it seems like it's okay it's wednesday night and we got church for the teenagers here in a little bit so yep all right well this is julian grant with dawkins family farm and thanks for watching and we'll see you next time do something you like to do have some fun with your family um, enjoy what you got and god bless god bless